Well, hello everyone. Today I'm wearing a working shirt, so you know we're going to get into something that's going to be fun. This will be a little tip, a couple little tips on putting up crown. It's not as hard as you might think if you are in pretty good shape with a intermediate level skill set. But even beginners can do it because you got to start somewhere. So start small with one room maybe even a closet or something like that, that in case it's not actually as perfect as you want it to be, not everyone's going to see it right off the bat. So let's get started. Well, crown itself, I just did a laundry room and going with a darker color with a more distinct connection to the ceiling, I, of course I trimmed in just nicely. And at the speed I work, it took me a full day just to cut in a, a small laundry room. But with the, with the way the nice base showed up and the contrast, since I'm going with more of a heavy contrast with a, with a medium gray and a, and a bright white trim, along with a dark floor, when I went to the ceiling, I thought, well, it really could use some trim, and heck, why not? I've got all the room torn apart, which is the big part doing a laundry room because it has so much shelving and so much equipment. Why not do it? So all the cord around and and all the, the crown that I needed was only like $120. So it's not very expensive. The big part is the labor and time it takes to put up or have someone put up for you. And of course, then you have to paint it and all that. So always paint your trim and parts on the ground before you put it up. And then you can only have then you only have to touch up where the nail holes are after you kinda in the corners where you have the little joints are. Maybe if you're doing quarter round you'll have to do the, the raw edges that will show. But it's really it really saves you a lot of time and takes a lot of the tedium out of it because you don't have to scooch on the floor. My knees are bad and my getting up and getting downs are extremely difficult so I like to get as much done when I'm not having to, to find something to pull up on, get up easily, that type of thing, or get down either which way. So I think I'll run this little video first and I'll show you what we're going to talk about. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. I have a story and a little bit of an ask of you. I also run a parallel channel on Rumble because of the story. I've had a YouTube channel for well over 10 years. It started out just for me and for friends, and it kind of grew. People liked the content. It very organically, it grew. Never advertised or whatever. I got a what I call a nasty gram email from YouTube saying, if you don't advertise on your videos, we reserve the right to advertise on them. So I applied to their program. I went a full year and it timed out. They never would approve my channel, even though it met all the requirements. I've gone back. I'm in my second year. They don't do it. I had lots of views and things going up until the point my knees went bad and I couldn't get around and I did a series on ATF items, silencer, suppressors, and ARs and etching and things like that. And all of a sudden I have fallen off the face of the earth. So if you will please consider helping someone out, you can let your voice be heard if you'll if you'll subscribe and hit the notification bell. If we get more activity coming back on this way, it may maybe somebody will notice. Maybe it'll help. I appreciate your time. I apologize for interrupting this video. When you add crown, oftentimes if the builder knows that he's going he's going to add the crown, the sheet rockers will do a better job getting the uh, ceiling straight. Now this wasn't the case here. This has been added just recently. And sometimes just getting it in there with, with the rooms not being square or whatnot can be a bit of a challenge. Well, you see from that, the joints I thought looked pretty good for an amateur. It looks as good as what some of the stuff I'm seeing in houses around town when we go to show them. And I'll be honest with you, it's not that difficult if you have a miter saw. You don't have to have a compound miter with the pull out back and forth for big stuff. Just a simple 10 inch saw. I think this is a 10 inch saw that I have right here, and it does pretty good. Now, you always do uh, up, down, and down, up when you do your crown because of the surfaces that you're working with. They fit the saw better, and there's plenty of videos on that. What I want to talk to you about is the preparation for putting it up. Now, I did the, I did the laundry room all by myself, uh, as usual, and I used some simple tools. Well, one of the first things I need is this right here, a stud finder. Okay, I think it works pretty well to find my studs on the wall while I'm up there. I can get it in place and hit something solid that's not wanting to try to walk its way back out as soon as I take my hand pressure off of the you know first nail or two that goes in. I also use this right here. Now this is this is a speed square, and on one side there's a red mark, and on the other side there is a green mark which doesn't want to show up, but it works so, because I can take this. And after I find my stud and I make a vertical mark up in the space that's going to be hidden by the, the crown, 
I then take this and run this up against the ceiling and make a mark at that point, which is the ideal spot for the base of that crown to fit, okay? It's just to get it in place so that I know I'm not shoving it too far up so it's leaning out and I'm not dropping it too far down so it's gonna lean in and it helps. But as we saw from the video, no ceiling is exactly perfect. Very seldom are walls perfectly square and sometimes we have those minor gaps. Plus where our measurement is often difficult to measure 100% exact. So I like to, since I don't have a trim stretcher, uh, I would rather start with something that appears to be about a quarter or an eighth inch long and then shorten it down to space. Running quarter round or shoe mold around the base is a little bit different because then I can start on one corner and cut it and bring it out to the edge of a wall where I can easily see it. Take a pencil mark, mark that, and I can get a much more accurate uh, measurement for the, the bottom molds if I don't have... I don't even have to measure it in most cases. I just jam it up there nice and tight where it fits and then make that mark and I can, I've used the saw enough, I can get it pretty darn close with, with the saw cutting that angle. And of course, your, your base molds and your crowns go in direct so they're not having to lean up against that backstop, you know, down up and up down, upside down when you do the, make all your cuts. So that's how that works. But a couple of other little tools I'll use is a cyanoacrylate. Uh, this happens to be extreme power thick. It, you can get it, it. This is this is like a su thick super glue that you find in a model store or a Hobby Lobby, something like that. It's thicker, so it does. It's not. It, it doesn't just suck right into the grain of the wood. That is raw at the point when you cut it, and it helps hold that joint nice and tight forevermore. But sometimes when we get to the corners, trying to get those two inside or outside corners to meet, it can be a bit of a challenge, right? If you've ever done that. So this I think helps when you use a super glue, get it up in there for the long run, but you have to make sure that you don't drip on anything because while you're at the store, get some uncure while you're there. So if you drip it on anything, you can put that uncure and undo the glue portion of it, get it to come up. It may take some soaking and a little bit of work if you drip it on the floor or something. And I can't guarantee it's not gonna take a finish off uh, a painted surface or something like that, or even off of some professional made products, flooring, countertops, that type of thing. But if you get your fingers glued together, hopefully you won't do that. But if you do, uh, it'll get them undone without having to take a razor blade between your fingers and, and lose a little skin. So that's one thing. The other thing that I do, I have a, this is a sanding block. It's actually just the end of a stud I've cut square about the size of a half a sheet of sandpaper. And I use this for hand finishing walls and little spots that I find that might be a little bit, you know, poking up when I'm trying to do paint right before I do paint. I can go in and knock that down a little bit. But it's just a stud with a little bit of the edges kind of just touched up with a, a sander to get them nice and smooth. But I will go through and I'll mark my studs. I then will put a horizontal mark where I know where the, the supposed ideal spot is for that piece of crown at the time of the ceiling. But the ceiling may wobble and wiggle a little bit. So sometimes it's a little higher, sometimes it might have to be a little bit lower. But you can eyeball when you're up on the ladder looking down each side to see it looking fairly straight and fairly tight. And if you'll use the stud finder when you drive your nails, you can, it'll, it'll want to stay better. And I use an air nailer here on this job. I've always, up to this point, driven them by hand. Now, the downside of driven them by hand, driving them by hand is, one, they will save you a little bit of money because you don't have to have an air compressor and you don't have to have a $130 nail gun. And there are some cheaper ones out there, but I prefer to have one that's a little bit better. And I use 18-gauge nails, which is a very small nail. It's bigger than a brad, uh, and it's less than the 16-gauge that we might use for something with a little bit more structure. And so the, the head holes that it puts in there will not be as, as big and you can set the air pressure if you get a good gun so it's just barely sinking them below the surface so that when you put your your little bit of painter's caulk on the top and then and let it dry and wipe it down with a wet damp type of rag that you get a smooth you don't get that you don't see the you don't see the caulk on the other side of the paint after you come back to touch it up now you can if you drive one by hand you typically have to have a little bit larger diameter uh, nail because you're going through you're going through the the trim and you're going through the sheetrock, which is half inch, and so we t typically, as they get thinner and thinner, they have to get shorter and shorter so they don't bend, and you don't end up whacking a a, a nail a hammerhead divot in the side of your your trim. 
So if you happen to have like an air compressor like this little like this uh, little pancake that I've had for years, it's not a big expense to add a, a nail gun if you have it, it'll save you some time. Looked a little fuzzy on the on that jowl right there. I guess I need to get that taken care of, but it's a working day. So we're here for content. Now what does this block have to do with putting trim in? Well if you'll kinda if you'll get it right on the two ends so it's tight and not like an inside corner, you can get them cut pretty nice and tight the first time where it's up against the sheetrock. Not super tight because you might not be able to get the next piece in without it wanting to be on top of slightly the other piece, the first piece you put in. But what I'll do is I'll, I'll start at the center and tack them down enough to hold the trim up, not maybe hit every stud, but get it up. And then when I get to the end and I cut the other piece and I fit them in there to make that corner, if they don't match perfectly, sometimes I can take this and one of these type of mallets and drive the entire corner up to bring the top part of that crown into contact with the other piece and you're bringing them both up together if you stay if you tack it all the way down you can't move that piece obviously so if we wait to super glue it and to put uh, the pieces together and they're not fixed and I happen to have them splayed out just a little bit at top I can drive that up which will drive that corner a little bit nicer and a little bit tighter and then when I got it in place usually the friction will hold it and if it looks like I'm within a reason and I could be as much as maybe a quarter of an inch out as it naturally wants to hold put a little bit of super glue and then drive it up and when it's in position then take your nail gun drop one in the corner of each of those two pieces and it makes a pretty nice little corner now in that video when you saw that little baby wing wall come off the top part of that is at two different elevations on that wall. You may not be able to tell it. So I was able to get that close, close enough that I could draw it up with uh, this type of method, get it tacked down in place with only one in the center, right? And I have nothing above it because it happens to be between the way the joist, the floor joist, the eye joist wants to run. There's nothing up there for it to nail into. So it's just held by one piece and that's where that super glue will help hold that piece of crown in place at the proper angle and they fit pretty nice and tight. Then you'll always, as far as I can get them, will always have to use on painted crown. It's usually finger jointed at that anyway. Um, it lets you hold them together at the joints and then just use just a minimal amount of caulk at the joints and with the exception of one joint that I, I cut a 13 and a half foot piece twice and I was down to my last piece of whole whole trim I decided that I would deal with maybe a, a gap that was very very small it wasn't perfect as I would like it to be but it was good enough for government work as they say and so it I think it adds a little bit it's not too hard to use those two tools in that fashion and again if it's if it's cut at the wrong angle they're not going to fit perfectly anyway now there is this thing we call coping and what a coping saw is is nothing but a, it's a small bow usually they're about that big and they'll have a little twist handle at the end and you unscrew that handle and it loosens the 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 uh, the blade which is very thin and very small and you can take it off and we use it to cut like round holes and in, in stuff because you can just drill a small hole with a with a smaller diameter drill and then take that off and put it in you basically add the saw in there and you can go around and make a nice thing well normally when they talk about coping a piece of trim particularly crown is when they do it you although you can, you can cope baseboard you will run a full piece across one piece and then we'll take the other one where the shape is and we'll just take a um, carpenter's pencil on the flat side so you get a nice nice dark line you'll cut it on the uh, on the miter saw at 45 degrees if that's if you're not doing something else normally it's 45 for a 90 degree angle so you'll cut it at 45 but then we'll want to come back in on the the edge that isn't painted on that raw edge at 45 and we want to make it a very sharp cut almost more like a knife shape and you take that saw and you kind of cut up around that shape i've grown a little bit lazy in my older years and the way i do it is i take a a four inch angle grinder with a sanding wheel on it and I just slowly sand it out. Now if you use a sanding wheel and you're taking that much material out, be careful that you don't get the wood hot and you don't burn it, you don't turn it black and you don't affect the paint on it when you do that. And what happens is you'll end up with just almost a knife blade fit against that straight piece that's it's leaned out but it, it's a full width kind of straight piece going side to side and it'll fit right up there nice and tight. I can get through so far in most cases I can get close enough without doing that even if the wall is not perfectly 90 degrees 
so that's that so that's about all that's in this particular tip uh, again when you paint I'm not a big fan of paint of painting it's one of the it's like painting is one of my least favorite things plumbing is one of my least favorite things uh, weed eating is one of my least favorite things. there's a whole lot of my least favorite things but still sometimes you just got to do what you just got to do and it's just something that you can do if the market is down and you're feeling a bit frustrated and you own a home, you can freshen up a few things. And it, I think it gives you, if it does what it does for me, it gives me a sense of accomplishment that I'm not that I'm not powerless and I'm not I'm not helpless and I'm able to improve my my conditions and I get the benefit from it because it's my house and I live there. Now, when I go to sell it, hopefully it'll still be in good shape and things will look nice and pretty and it'll make a a beneficial addition to my home's value when I want to sell it or maybe it's just eye candy and I get the sale when somebody else maybe doesn't so I hope that's helpful to you you don't have to use it if you don't want to don't try it but uh, you've seen a video uh, I'm running it right now so that you get an idea of what you can do even with an imperfect ceiling and a intermediate level of expertise which i would think i'm somewhere in the intermediate zone i don't like to caulk underneath the trim when i put it up because i have a colored wall and the white the white caulk painter's caulk will yellow with time and i just would rather maybe if i have to I'll, I'll put some caulk at the ceiling because i have a white ceiling and white trim and if i happen to get over you might see a little bit of the the semi-gloss or the or the the satin depending on which you do your trim in you might do full gloss but sometimes that will show against that flat paint of the ceiling when you have to paint over the caulk because otherwise it's probably going to yellow in a few years and it will it will look bad so i normally don't caulk the bottom until the next time i go to paint the room and then i'll go ahead and caulk it first i'll paint the trim then you can do the walls and it will you can cut in and it will just be painting over the other paint and the caulk will be well hidden so i hope that's been worth watching and uh, we'll see you on the next video appreciate you